I want to thank you for joining us for this Power Up webinar on creating a tapeless workflow inside Final Cut Pro from ingest to output. The purpose of this session is to give you a complete look at how to work with tapeless media, especially if tapeless media is new to you. My name is Larry Jordan, and I'm really glad you're joining us today. Let me outline what I want to talk about before we actually get into the details. When you're working with tapeless, the very first thing that you need to do is to plan what you want to do. Then, you want to create a folder organization and naming system, and this is done before you even move on set, because it's really important for you to understand where you're going to put your files. Then, you copy the cards that you shoot in a tapeless environment. You want to copy those safely, which means to more than one hard disk, and completely. We'll talk a lot about this in a few minutes. Then we need to configure Final Cut Pro to work with tapeless media. And here, we're going to have to work with a couple of menus that we don't often go into because Easy Setup does not always cover us when we're doing tapeless media. Then we ingest the media, but instead of using Log and Capture, which we use for tape, we're going to use Log and Transfer, which is what we use for tape less. Then we edit and export our files as usual. And we're going to cover all these steps over the course of the next hour. As we start the planning process, there's a whole series of questions that we need to get answers to. For instance, what makes tapeless media different from tape-based media? What video formats does Final Cut edit natively? What video formats does Final Cut need to transcode? What does transcode mean? What format does Final Cut transcode into? When does it transcode? How does it transcode? And <laughs> where are all those transcoded files stored? Well, let's go through answering these questions because that's going to build the foundation that we need to be able to understand what we're going to be doing once we move into editing and capturing tapeless media. What makes tapeless different from tape media? Well, there's really two key differences. First, media stored on videotape is always a single codec. It's a single image size, and often it's a single frame rate where media recorded tapeless can contain a variety of image sizes, a variety of frame rates, and in fact, by a simple change of a menu option on the camera can often change the codecs. Final Cut can't live with different codecs, different frame rates, and different image sizes in the same timeline. So that means it has to treat tapeless media different than tape. The second key difference is that tape media is recorded and stored permanently on videotape cassettes, which we then store on a shelf or store in the vault. Tape less media is recorded on cards. The contents of those cards get copied to our hard disk, then the cards get erased. Long term storage is not part of a tapeless format. We've got to figure out how we're going to archive these as an entirely different process than capturing and editing tapeless media. One of the terms we toss around a lot is a term called native. Editing a video format natively means that the media is edited in the same format as it is shot. The native media does not need to be converted, which is the definition of transcoding. If we say that we're transcoding media, we're converting it from one format, AVC-HD, into another format, ProRes. We're converting DVC Pro HD from its MXF format into a QuickTime format. Transcoding does not necessarily imply a change in quality. It does, however, imply a change in format. 